Yep, it's one of these videos. I know. Now, I said I was going to do starter kits for album, for bands as well, and I will. This is something a little different, um, but I'm gonna. They're kind of gonna be companion pieces um, where I rank the albums, but I also like say how to get into the band as a whole. Um, so I'll do a tier list ranking the albums best to worst, and I will also do uh, a starter kit for how to get into a certain band. Um, so I would almost say if you are new to the band, new to Radiohead watch the starter kit first whenever it goes up and then come back to this later after the video after you've heard all the albums whatever just to see how i rank them now i understand that these videos are a little uh legion a little ubiquitous um which i understand so if you don't want to watch these fine i don't care um it's just easy content to make so i'm doing it and i get to talk about radiohead so that's that's always nice. That's always nice. So, um, I'm just going to go chronologically here from uh, Pablo Honey to A Moon-Shaped Pool. Nine albums. And I'm just going to rate them. Um, it's going to be a mix. Just letting you guys know this. So don't get angry at any surprises that come your way. It's going to be a mix of objective and subjective opinions here. Um, it's probably half and half, maybe 60% subjective, 40% objective, hard to say. A lot of this will make sense, and a lot of this will probably be stuff you've seen before. However, um, there might be some surprises that you don't expect. So, um, let's, let's kick it off. Uh, let's begin with Pablo Honey. This is their, is there a way to just like leave it? No, there isn't. This is their first album. Came out in 93, if I'm not mistaken. 93. I was one year old. Just barely. Actually, I wasn't even a full year old yet. Anyway, um, yeah, this this album, no surprise, dead last. Um, for a couple reasons. One, it's not the best Radiohead album. Uh, not even by a long shot. It's it's a different kind of album. If you go on Wikipedia, it lists it as alternative rock and grunge, which certainly was the case. Um, and as, if you just take it in a vacuum and not compare it to the other great Radiohead albums, it functions as a decent grunge album. It's not awful. It's just okay. Um, Creep has been played to death. Uh, there are some songs on this album I really like, though, like... Uh, Thinking About You, um, I find Anyone Can Play Guitar to be interesting, but more or less the album just falls so flat. It has a five on Pitchfork. Uh, it ha Actually, if you go on the reception on Wikipedia, it's like basically right down the middle. Like everyone gave it like half of the scale, which I find really funny. So not a lot to say about it. Kind of just a throwaway grunge album, honestly. Um, then two years later, we get The Bins. The Bins. This, this was a fantastic album, obviously. Um, I, I place The Bins at C. I think The Bins is stupendous. People call it Britpop. I don't understand why. There's, like, maybe high and dry and fake plastic trees are as close as you get, but the rest are kind of experimental. They're they're going in weird directions. Um, highlights for me are The Bends, Fake Plastic Trees, uh, Nice Dream, Just... Oops, spooky. Uh, just is really great. Bulletproof, I Wish I Was, fantastic. And, of course, you got Street Spirit Fade Out, one of the best album closers of all time. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. This is just a great alt-rock uh, indie rock album from the mid nineties. Definitely one to check out. So that takes us to their third album. Okay. Computer in 1997. This was much more experimental, um, still in the alternative vein, but, uh, much, much wilder, uh, than the bands in some ways. Um, okay. Computer number one. This 
quite easily, objectively, is their best album. Um, I know for a long time, Kid A was considered to be their best, but the conversation has kind of swung in a different direction. Um, people are lauding Kid A, uh, OK Computer now, and I think I see why. Um, Kid A has just like a handful of weak moments, whereas um, OK Computer is just boom, 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 boom. Like Fitter Happier is probably its weakest moment, but who sits and listens to that? Um, highlights for me, Paranoid Android, obviously, Love Subterranean, Hopes of Alien, Exit Music for a Film, uh, doesn't get talked about enough. Letdown is great. Karma Police, obviously, is great. Climbing Up the Walls, I really like. Uh, no Surprises, great, obviously. Uh, Lucky and the Tourist. Tourist is fantastic. Um, just a solid alt-rock album with some experimental tones in there. It's a little progressive. Some of the songs are a little long. Um, Paranoid Android, uh, as an example, six minutes long. Um, yeah, great album. Great album. Um I'm not going to be talking extensively about the songs in this video just because I'm rating the albums and I'm not going song by song like I will in the starter kit. So just trying to truck through this. Um, next, we have what came next? Kid A, of course, of course. 2000 rolls around and they go all beep boop bippity bop music. They, they go electronic, guys. And some people were like, I'm not having this. And then, like, decades later, people, or a decade later, everyone's like, I'm having this. Kid A, I put at A, ironically enough. Um, I think, uh, like, there's a couple things in uh, Kid A that weigh it down just ever so slightly below OK Computer. I would say Tree Fingers is, I kind of sleep on that track a little bit. It's a little. It's fine, but uh, it's not fantastic. Um, In Limbo is okay, and Morning Bell is fine. Uh, all the other tracks really stand out, though. Everything in its right place is fantastic, of course. Uh, I really like Kid A, the title track. It's very um, ethereal and like music box from another evil dimension. National Anthem is a great rock song. How to Disappear Completely, second favorite on the album, I'd say. Optimistic, great rock song, Idiotech, fantastic IDM tune, and Motion Picture Soundtrack, my favorite. Probably my top three favorite Radiohead songs. It's just so beautiful. Um, yeah, this could this could almost be S, honestly, but it's just it's just barely below because I think OK Computer is much tighter. Whereas this is just kind of like a they shot out of a cannon, they're going way too fast. Way too fast. Um, a year later. They come out with Amnesiac, which is kind of the leftovers, if you will, um, from uh, Kid A. You got a lot of different types of uh, music on this album. Um, uh, you got experimental stuff like Kid A, but you also have some jazz influence. You got like trumpets, horn sections, classical influences. Really compelling stuff, um, but it's kind of a mess. It's kind of a mess. Um, I place this on D. It could be C on a good day for me, but it's most often D because songs like Pack Like Sardines in a Crushed Tin Box, Polk Pole Revolving Doors, uh, Morning Bell yet again, Dollars and Cents, Hunting Bears, Like Spinning Plates, I don't enjoy those songs. Um, people might crucify me for that. That's fine. That's the subjective side of me. Um, other people might put this album higher on the list. But Pyramid Song, You and Whose Army, I Might Be Wrong, Knives Out, and Life in a Glass House, great. I love You and Whose Army. That's probably my top five favorite Radiohead songs. Um, yeah, it's solid. By no means think put me putting it at D is a diss. No pun intended. Um, it's just subjective connection to the album. That makes me put it at D and not C. So, a couple years pass, and we go to Hail to the Thief. What a splendid rock album. 
uh, songs to note on here that I really love. Sit down, stand up, hit, sail to the moon, go to sleep, where I end and you begin. We Suck Young Blood, I think is very underrated. They're there, obviously. I Will is fantastic. Uh, Mixomatosis is just crazy. Uh, Scatterbrain is underrated. And A Wolf at the Door, one of the best Radiohead closers of all time. What an albumin this is. I really like this album. It goes at B. Uh, yeah, fantastic uh, rock album. It's it's kind of the best of both worlds. It's it's if they did OK Computer after Kid A kind of a thing. Um, it's not as experimental as Kid A, but it's more experimental than OK Computer. Great album, and I think people sleep on it a little too much. They don't talk about it enough. Two thousand seven is raining outside. Two thousand seven rolls around. And we get in rhombos. This goes at the very bottom. It's trash. No, I'm kidding. This is my favorite Radiohead album. And this might garner me some dislikes. I put it up there with OK Computer, honestly. Now people might think, wow, you put in rainbows above Kid A and on the same level as OK Computer. And my answer is, yep. Sue me. This album is so freaking tight. And even the weakest song, Fast Arp, is great. 15 Step, uh, arguably also might be a contender for the weakest. It's overplayed, I, little, I think. Um, but it's a great song. Body Snatchers, fantastic, thick, chunky rock song. Nude, probably also in my top five. Weird Fishes is so chill. All I Need is Moody as Hell. Reckoner, my favorite Radiohead song. House of Cards is another... House of Cards is like if Body Snatchers was trying to do an imitation of Nude. Uh, Jigsaw Falling Into Place, fantastic rock song. And Videotape. If you haven't heard it, the, I think it's 2006 Bonnaroo live version of Videotape. Gives a very different uh, flavor to the song. Um, and I actually think that the studio version is weaker than that early live version. The early live version is much rockier, and I, I like it a lot more. Brings out the syncopation. Um, but it's a great album closer, too. It's very skeletal on the piano. Um, just great. And the second disc of B-Sides, I think, is worth noting as well. Um, you have... Uh, down is the new up, I think, is, is solid. Go Slowly is fantastic. Last Flowers is beautiful. Um, up on the Ladder is okay. Four Minute Warning is beautiful. Um, just great stuff. And I will stand by wholeheartedly putting it right next to OK Computer. That's probably half subjective, half objective at that point, um, putting it that high up. So let's keep going. Uh, their next album was one that was kind of controversial. 2011 rolls around and they throw out the King of Limbas. This one. This goes right up with the best. No. Um, very divisive album. Um, arguably more electronic than Kid A. And people argued that it was a little more robotic, a little more stiff, which I can I agree with. Um, but there are elements of it I do like. Um, I think Bloom is an interesting opener. Morning Mr. Magpie, okay. Little by Little is interesting. Feral is okay. Lotus Flower is probably the better song on the album. Codex is solid. Give Up the Ghost is fine. And Separator is a little low-key. Um, this goes on E. Uh, I don't hate it by any means, um, but I rarely ever go back to it. It, uh, I just listened to it like several times and it didn't connect with me. I don't think it connected with anybody. Um, it was just too, it was the wrong mixture of electronic and organic. Um, because it was very compartmentalized, but there was a lot of acoustic stuff in there too. There's acoustic guitar, there's piano, but it, uh, I don't know, just sent it out, sent out a weird vibe, I think. So. 2011, fast forward to 2016, five years later, they dropped their most recent album, A Moon-Shaped Pule. Pule. Um, this was a 
spectacular album. Um, experimental art rock, some chamber music in there. Um, interesting, like classical choices, arrangements by Johnny Greenwood. Great album kicks off with Burn the Witch, which is this awesome, like experimental chamber pop song. Chamber pop? Chamber rock? Probably chamber rock. Uh, daydreaming this ethereal piano piece that's just so incredibly codex wishes it could be daydreaming um dex dark is this really dark and brooding compelling song desert island disc is what uh give up the ghost which it wishes it could be full stop is this awesome progressive minimalist rock song glass eyes is a beautiful piano song codex also wishes it could be glass eyes identikit i loved that song when they first debuted it and I was so happy to see it on this album. I think it's a little weaker than the live early live versions. I think the changes they made, subjectively, for me, weren't uh, uh, improvement. Uh, the numbers, really great uh, orchestral arrangements from Johnny Greenwood on that. Present Tense, possibly one of the better songs on the album. It's really good. Uh, Tinker, Taylor, Soldier, Sailor, Rich Man, Poor Man, Bigger Man, Thief. No one cares about that song. And True Love Waits, beautiful. A very old song dating back to like 1995 in Radiohead's discography, I think. And uh, they just made it super skeletal on a, on a keyboard. Um, and it worked great. Uh, and then you also had uh, Ill Wind and Spectre as a bonus disc that kind of came out of those sessions, uh, which were both solid songs. I put this one right next to Kid A. I think it deserves it. Oh, no. Now you see the text at the bottom. How embarrassing. So that, everybody, is my Radiohead list. There, looks a little better. Um, that's my final tier. Let me know what you think. Let me know how wrong or how right I am. Um, and let me know which order you would do like be you know i think the bench should be lower or higher or hail to the thief whatever i want to hear your onions your opinions your pin onions um and stay tuned for radiohead starter kit and i will be doing starter kits and um tier lists for coldplay which i've heard all their music beach house which i've heard all their music um I'll do the Beatles, too. I'm not going to do a starter kit for the Beatles, but I might do a tier list just for fun. Um, I'm trying to think what other bands I've heard all their albums of. I don't know. But stay tuned, everybody. And uh, be sure to keep watching the song reactions I'm doing with my nephew, Ethan. Um, we're trying to put those out as much as we can. And uh, my album reactions as well. Thank you, everyone for watching, for subscribing, for sticking around. I really appreciate the engagement with the channel. Bye.